nourriture. Donnez-moi à manger, j'ai faim. J'ai faim. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merde On est bon, mes amis Au revoir Lady Farthingale, sir. Who's Lady Farthingale, you friggin' fop? I must protest, sir. And please, call these ruffians out of the church. Shoot him, Smithers. <laughs> Lady Farthingale, sir. Worth a bit of money, I don't wonder. Lord Farthingale's a lucky bastard, eh, Marshal, mon ami? <laughs> Maybe. But that cape of hers is like an over-rich sauce, which conceals the true taste of the dish. Stripper, Kelly. I'll do it myself. Oh. What is your husband's full name, madame? Sir Augustus Farthingdale. Is he a general? He's a colonel, like you. What's your <laughs> lip, my lady? If indeed you are the lady. Look more like Portuguese to me. Here's my wedding ring. Here's our initials engraved. Here's your proof. How long have you been married then? Six months. Ooh. So the shine's still on it, eh? What brings you up here to this church? The statue of our Holy Mother in this church is said to have special powers. I, um... I came to pray for a child. Lord Farthingale still firing blanks, eh? Do oh. you mind, Missy? I'll give you a full-blown belly by sundown. Madame, is your husband rich? Very. Well, think how much he'll give us to get her back. A lot. See? And how much of your belly is full by my friend Hakeswell here? Nothing. So you must leave her alone, and our friend who we found yesterday, until we have the gold. You must find another chicken for your pot. This one's mine. Send it to the inn. Is this how the English treat their allies? We follow no flag, missy. English, frog, Portuguese. We fight for ourselves now. <laughs> Madame, you will dine with me tonight. I am cooking poulet with oil and garlic and some fine red wine. Morning, sir. I have a ransom note now. They want me to send Sharp with the gold. Why did the scum want me to send Sharp, Nan? Damned if I know, sir. You'll be damned if you don't find out, Nan! Damn it, Nan. What is the point of having you as head of confidential agents if you don't know why they want me to send Sharp? That's only one of two things I don't understand, sir. The other is why you're taking so much trouble over Sir Augustus Farthingdale, a fop fresh out of England, seeking glory in Spain with the help of a few hacks at horse guard. Well, at least you seem to know something about Sir Augustus. Six weeks here, and this silly old sod lets his young wife go gallivanting up north to some village and far too close to the frontier for comfort. Now a gang of deserters have grabbed her, promised to diddle her to death unless he gives them a ransom of gold. Well, he's got the guineas. He's a rich man, sir. Let him go himself. 
This letter is fresh from London, man. It seems Sir Augustus has been appointed His Majesty's special military envoy to the government of Portugal. Our allies, man. Anything we want, we have to ask Sir Augustus. Oh, God. Sir Augustus will be here within the hour. He'll want to know how I propose to get his wife back in his bed. Hear me, Nan? Oh, I hear you, sir. Then hear me well, Nan. I expect the frogs to attack any day. I need the Portuguese to rally round. I need every friend I can muster at the court in Lisbon. Sir Augustus Farthingdale is the one man who can help or hinder me. I think Sir Augustus will hound me hard to get his wife back. So I shall hound you hard. And you, Nan? I shall hound Captain Sharp, sir. Stay down, sir. Stay down. Come on, Colonel. Come on, sir. Here I am. How are you doing, sir? Name? Rank? Sergeant Patrick Harper, sir. 95th Rifles. I heard you swearing, Sergeant Harper. How dare you swear in front of an officer? Oh, jeez, I'm very, very sorry, sir. Must just have sort of slipped out, so it did. Who are these scruffy savages? They're chosen men, sir. Picked out for their special skills. That's why they wear the white cords of courage, sir. Yes, but not for much longer, they won't. And nor will you have these stripes, Sergeant Harper. As soon as I see Lord Wellington, I'm going to have all of you put on a charge for disorderly conduct. Beg your pardon, sir. These men were acting under my orders, sir. Your orders, sir? And who are you to give orders? I'm an officer, sir. You are an officer, sir? Yes, sir. Captain Sharp, 95th Rifles, sir. Sharp? Sharp, yes, I heard something about you in Lisbon. Are you the fellow that Wellington raised from the ranks, Sharp? Yes, sir. Yes, well, I always thought it was a bad idea, and now I've got proof of it. When I see Lord Wellington, I'm going to speak to him about your conduct, Sharp. Is that you, Sir Augustus? Major Nan. Lord Wellington's staff, sir. I take it you are Sir Augustus, Father Nan. I am he, Nan. I should like to complain about the conduct of one of your officers. Lord Wellington is waiting for you, sir. He's most anxious to allay your anxiety about that matter you alluded to in your notes, sir. Well, I should like to uh, bathe and change first. Where is my tent, Nan? Last but one on the right, sir. I have water on the boil for you. <laughs> See that colonel, Sharp? That colonel came here to make you a major. Would you believe that? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> right hand up to God, Sharp. That's your left hand, sir. I swear to God, Sharp. You mean I miss being made major? Maybe not. Report to Wellington's tent at seven. Why? What shall I say when that colonel goes on about my behaviour, sir? Act like a man, Sharp. Crawl. Eat humble pie. Beg. But don't worry about that for now. Right now, what you have to worry about is how to get those horses from the rocket troop. Well, maybe I'll get lucky, sir. Maybe one of those rockets will blow me to kingdom come. That's the spirit, Sharp.
consistent, Lieutenant. Ten salvos and you've missed every time. Let's have those horses, Harper. Uh, please, sir. One last salvo. Tell you the truth, Lieutenant. I'm dirty, deaf and damned if I want to see another rocket. Very well. One last salvo. But if you miss, we'll have your horses. Come on, Pat. Sir! Where are you going, sir? Where I can get a bit of peace. The barn. Rocket troop! Reload! Right. Kill the flag, Pat. This sergeant I met at Badahoff, Billy Smith. He used to be based at Shorncliffe Camp, where they made these Congreve rockets. Hmm? Well, he said they're grand going away from you. But the right devil's coming at you. <laughs> Rocket troop, prepare to fire! Laser, come back! Light, fuses! Stand aside! Mr. Teresa. Bye, Mr. Teresa. <laughs> Tell Gilliand he's got a reprieve on the Rockies and he can keep his horses. Sir. I missed you. How's our daughter? How's Antonia? Free spirit. Like her mother. <laughs> what, what do you notice first about her? She sees everything. She'll be sharpshooter, like you. Really, my lord, this fellow Sharp is almost five minutes late. Not to mention his bad manners this morning. I really must insist that you speak to him. What? Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. Ned and I are engrossed in your book. Practical instructions to the young officer in the art of warfare, with special reference to the engagements now proceeding in Spain. My congratulations, Colonel. Given that you wrote this work before your arrival in Spain, it shows remarkable confidence, what? Oh, absolutely. Amazing, said Augustus. Yes, well, I very much appreciate your kind words, my lord. But my wife weighs heavily on my mind, sir. <clears throat> my lord. Buenas tardes, my lord. Good day, madam. Allow me to present Colonel Sir Augustus Farthingdale, His Majesty's military representative in Lisbon. Colonel Commandante Moreno, commander of the Spanish guerrillas across the border. She is to take part in the operation we propose. And Captain Sharp of the 95th. You're your servant, ma'am. Captain Sharp and I have met. You're late, sir. And I cannot abide unpunctuality. I'm sorry I'm late, my lord. The inspection of the rocket battery ran to a full hour, sir. I am not happy you did not give me my horses, Sharp. You think there may be something in these rockets, Sharp? Not as to accuracy, sir. But they play merry hell with the morale of poorly led men, sir. The sound is shocking. Scared you, did they? I was terrified, sir. Do you, uh... Do you think Captain Sharp's the right man to send with the ransom, sir? He won't cut and run if somebody lets off a gun, will he? Who is this for? I have not come here, my lord, 
to listen to Captain Sharp explaining about his rockets. What about my wife, sir? You have the ransom? 500 golden guineas. Good. The deserters have demanded the gold be delivered by Captain Sharp. Oh, I wonder why, sir. It's probably because he knew one of the ruffians when he was a private soldier. That's what comes of uh, raising from the ranks. Uh, personally, my lord, I don't hold with it. My lord, if I may speak. Sir Augustus is probably correct in speculating that whoever asked for me served under me in the ranks. I was a sergeant and a stickler for duty. So it's fair to assume that whoever it is wants to settle a score and slit my throat. But if Sir Augustus does not trust me, then I am more than willing to step down and let him take the gold himself, sir. Well, I am willing to accept Captain Sharp as a messenger, if you are, my lord. Let's have it, Nan. We're here. And Gladys is here. Three days' march across rough country. The Spanish call it the Gateway of God because it controls a pass between Portugal and Spain. We can send an escort with the gold as far as the river. We see a black flag flying from a tree and the escort must stop there. Sharp and one other man will go on with the gold, carrying personal arms only, Sharp. Any tricks? And they promise to slit Lady Farthingdale's throat, sir. Among other things. Um, that's it, my lord. What do you say, Sharp? We leave at dawn, sir. That seems satisfactory, Colonel. Well, naturally, I had hoped to go myself. No, Sir Augustus, these dogs will merely make you a hostage and raise the ransom. Well, that being so, I have certain concerns as to the correct conduct of Captain Sharp and his men. My wife is a lady. I must ask you to impress on Captain Sharp the need to observe proper standards which are not necessarily his by birth. How dare he speak of Captain Sharp in such a fashion, my lord? We Morenos are of the blood. We know who is a man of manners and who is a man of the mouth. And you, Sir Augustus, are a man of the mouth. Take my advice and shut it before somebody shuts it for you. How dare you, madam? Sir Augustus has a point, Sharp. You and your man can be a bit rough and ready. Sir Augustus has written a book about the proper conduct of the Spanish campaign. I suggest you study it tonight, Sharp. Full of good things. Listen. The men during the march shall keep their files. No indecent language or noise to be allowed. Be sure to read that particular part to the chosen men after prayers tonight, Sharp. Wild horses wouldn't stop me, sir. Don't talk about horses, Sharp. Dismiss! If you were a man, I would call you out, force you to fight a duel, and kill you. Close thing, that, sir. They call her the needle. Don't ask me why. Am I in danger? Escort Colonel Farthingdale to his quarters, would you? Good day, sir. Sharp kept his head. Wants to make major, sir. Hmm. Any chance I'll hand her over? None. Once they've got the gold, they'll hump her to death and damn all we can do about it. And Sharp, I feel sorry for, sir. Oh, where's it gone? Hang on a minute, I can see it. Here it is. <laughs> Go on, and the bird it did fly in, and the bird it did fly out, just above her lily white knee. Oh, go on, son. You're going to have to help on stage. The bird in the bush is a hell to no heart. No. Oh, we tarried here all day to drink down the sun. Let us tarry here and drink down the moon. Green tops. Short barrels. barrels. The bloody fighting 95th. First in the, the field, field and the last out, out of it.
Listen to this, lads. Soldiers should not form liaisons with local women in a warm climate. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you gave Ramona a fat belly, Harper. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Feels kind of funny being a father. Feels fine to me. No, I'm not much of a father. Anyway, don't call it after me. No, I won't. How about Gorgas Sir Fartingdale's ten, sir? <laughs> Fartingdale Harper. Yeah, well, whatever. He's spreading money around like snuff at a wake trying to dig up the dirt about you, sir. He even had a word with me about you and Teresa, so he did. And what did you tell him, Harper? I told him you were stone mad about Miss Teresa, so he did. He seemed very happy to hear that, and he rewarded me with a silver shilling. Good. Well, give it to Ramona. I'd say she's earned it. First your fat belly, then her own. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Teresa. Good night. Hey, you men, would it be too much trouble to ask you to move your big, fat arses out of the way and give Mr. Sharp a bit of privacy? I'll trade you a Voltaire and a filthy book by the Marquis de Sade for your Sir Augustus, sir. Done, Harris. Hey, bring it back. Of course, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Harris. Good night. Christmas in two weeks. Too cold to take it off, is it? Take it off in bed, eh? I hate that fellow Farthingdale. Ah, he misses his wife, that's all. Mm. Feel the same way about you sometimes when you go off. Mm. Feel that way about little Antonia now. Miss her. She must be very beautiful, his wife. Beautiful? How do you know? Well, because... Because he was happy and you were mad about me. Mm -hmm. He's afraid you would fall in love with his wife. My mind like a rocket, Teresa. Too fast for me. Mm -hmm. I never know where you'll land. <laughs> but is it true that you are mad about me? Uh, harp is a bit hard of hearing. I said I was mad at you. <laughs> no wonder Harper was so happy. Because he would get a child? No. Because he got a shilling. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Isabella? It's not to look. Don't worry. I'm married to a French colonel. I fell in love before this war began. He's a brave man. He'll come soon. I know he will. I'm married to an English colonel. 
hard. And he won't come at all. Bring back my wife safely, and you'll get a guinea apiece. Any complaints about your conduct, and you'll get the gallows. Mind your manners when you see my wife, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Carry on, Captain Chop. Do you feel sorry for him still? Let's go, Harper. Rifles! Trail! Arms! Right! Face! Quick! March! Well, and adieu to you, Spanish ladies. Farewell, and adieu to you, ladies of Spain. For we've received orders to sail home to England. But I know in some time we'll return once again. And here's a good health to the 95th rifle, the first in the field. And the last from the fray, when Bonaparte's armies are banished and beaten, they'll talk of the 95th winning the day. Perkins. Welcome to my parlor, Sharpie. No wonder Alice reads Voltaire. Listen. Donnez pas pour les gros battalions, mais pour ceux qui tirent les murs. God is not on the side of the big battalions, but of the best shots. <laughs> not bad for a frog, eh? <laughs> Do you think these deserters will hand over Lady Fattingdale to you tomorrow, Richard? Of course they will. As soon as they get the gold. You are a bad liar, Richard. So I'll always be faithful. If not, you'll easily find out. You 
see what I see. You know, sometimes I wish I was blind. Looks like a bloody army to me. Not just that. Look at the uniforms. Good God. There's French with them. Spanish and Portuguese, too. News of this gets out. We can kiss goodbye to discipline back home. Say a bit of fun, ladies. Get down. gold we can get. We should battle all day. Don't you want your gold, deserter? Deserter? You call me a deserter. And what else would I call a dog like you? <laughs> Die, damn deserter! My name is Captain Richard Sharp. 
95th Regiment in the Army of Wellington. You're not a deserter. We're here on the same mission, monsieur. This was their idea of a joke, to make us fight each other. They're probably watching us from somewhere up there. Arthur! Leave him! Jean! Game's over! You want your gold? Bend the ladies. I'm Chef de Bataillon Michel Du Breton. Colonel, eh? You speak good English. My wife is English. You have a hostage here. My wife. Do they know that you're her husband? No. So glad you could make it, Sharpie. How's your back, laddie? Who is he? His name is Hakeswell. Obadiah Hakeswell. Had me flogged once. Had Sergeant Harper flogged. Not so long ago, I tried to rape my wife. I swore I'd kill him. How's your Spanish oar, Sharpie? Shoot and your marshal dies. Now! Now! Mes amis, let him go. Let him go! My friends, let us not fight. Let us eat. Bien? Faisi. C'est bon. C'est très bon. That's De Ron. He calls himself Marshal Potofeu. He's a cook. Livre. A good one. Separate la chair des os. Fait marronner toute la nuit. Dans du vin rouge et de l'ail. Faites ensuite cuire au bon mari pendant deux heures. Et serve chaud avec une larme d'huile d'olive. Not for the froggy talk, Sharpie. If you want the women, give me the gold. Tried to escape, branding her with a hot iron. Hurts a lot. Want to see the women, Sharpie? Follow me. Funny thing, Sharpie. We've got an English woman for this froggy colonel here, and an half breed Portuguese for your English colonel Farthingdale. Funny that. Dupont! Right. This one's yours, Colonel. But no froggy talk. One word in frog and she goes straight back to her cell. Talk English like a Christian. Madame, I'm Colonel Beauchamp. And I have the honor to know your husband, Colonel Du Breton. He sends you his love. I trust my husband is well, Colonel. He worries a lot about you, madam. And you? I am withering in my bloom. Lost in solitary gloom, Colonel Beauchamp. Solitary gloom. 
No wonder your husband loves you so much, madam. As bright as you're beautiful. Isn't that nice? Now, sharp is turn. Then our lady, Farthingdale! Captain Sharp of the 95th, madam. I'm Isabella, Lady Farthingdale. I've come to take you home, milady. Oh, no, Sharpie. We've changed our mind. We want double the amount. We've paid you. That buys the lady's virtue. But only for five days. You come back here, same time, same place, with double the amount of gold, Sharpie. And if we do come back with the gold, how do we know you'll release them then? You'll just have to take my word for it. And if you're a minute late, we'll bust them. Pass them around the boys. And a good busting it'll be, too. Show them your goodies, my lady. Stripper! Oh, I know you. Do you? Battle of Televera. I know your name in a tick. No names for the fighting squad, Sharpie. Stripper! Let the frogs do it. No! If you want to shame somebody, shame me. Show Sharpie what you've got, my lady. Stop sharp here, or I'll flog around the convent. Strip your body, Smithy. My compliments, ma'am. Shall I give your regards to your husband? Any message? Come back soon, Captain Sharp. And sit sharp on your way, boy. Take him away! I have a message from General Wellington. <laughs> General Wellington promises that he will hang every man who does not present himself at our outpost by New Year's Day. Five days, Sharpie. My wife is a calm woman, yet she seemed a little hysterical. Even quoted poetry, withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. Do you know the poem? No. Well, when you get back to your people, please ask someone who does. Why? I think it's some kind of message. A message for you is no concern of mine, Colonel. Well, it may help if you're planning to rescue Lady Farthingdale. And you? You're not planning to rescue your wife, too? I would die for her. My superiors will not allow me to risk French lives in an attempt to rescue my English wife. Colonel Du Breton. Allons-y. So what are you going to do, Colonel? My escort. I must go. A man without rank tells a Colonel what to do. Don't you have majors who tell generals what to do, Captain? Be careful. This is the man who would abandon my wife. He has no honor. Who's the English officer? Je vous présente le capitaine. I speak English, Du Breton. And I'm sure this Englishman has no French. My name is Ducot. Major Ducot. You? 
Captain Richard Sharp, 95th Regiment, Rifles. You are the shot that stole an Imperial Eagle at the Battle of Talavera? Steel is a strong word, sir. I found it in the middle of a French column. Where I come from, it's a case of finders keepers. Come, Colonel. We've wasted enough time in Adrados. It was a fool's errand in the first place. Fool's errand? That man's wife is held hostage, sir. What is he to do? Find another. As you will have to if your wife ever falls into my hands. Tell Teresa Moreno that you will suffer the fate of all hoes if she ever falls into the ends of France. You're a dead man, Duco. You're a spy, Duco. And not a very good one. When I get back, I shall tell my superiors that the French have a special agent in this area. And when my wife catches you behind our lines, you will die like a dog, sir. Adieu, Monsieur Duco. Wouldn't you answer a simple question? Was Lady Fathingdale pretty? Maybe. If you like that kind of look. Did you notice her, Harper? Oh, I did, so I did. She's uh, slender, but she's uh, shapely too, if you know what I mean. Oh. Harper, I have half a bottle of the best Irish whiskey from the Irish priests at Salamanca. You speak a word and you're dead, Harper. I'll be dead, but sure I'll be drunk. May God forgive me for telling you this, miss, but Lady Fartingale was made to strip off naked in front of Mr. Sharp in order that he'd take pity on her, miss. No! When are you going back for her? Who says I'm going back for her? You do by not speaking about her. Withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. It's me to a teapot. 